Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a system for real solutions. We have x plus y plus z equals square root of 3 and x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 1 and we're going to be looking for real values. So, in order to manipulate this equation, from the first one, I'm going to isolate z. Let's go ahead and uh, get the z by itself. z can be written as square root of 3 minus the quantity x plus y. And then I'm going to substitute that into the second equation. Let's go ahead and do that. So that gives me x squared plus y squared plus square root of 3 minus the quantity x plus y quantity squared equals 1. So let's go ahead and subtract, uh, let's go ahead and square this as a difference. So that should be x squared plus y squared plus, so it's kind of like a minus b quantity squared. This is going to give me 3 minus 2 root 3 times x plus y plus x plus y quantity squared. And that's equal to 1. So let's go ahead and expand this and we're going to simplify. We get x squared plus y squared plus 3 minus 2 root 3x minus 2 root 3y plus x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. And now we can just go ahead and subtract 1 and set the whole thing equal to 0. Now let's go ahead and add like terms. We have x squared plus x squared here. That gives me 2x squared. And then I have y squared plus y squared, which is 2y squared. And then I'm getting 2xy from here. And then that's followed by negative 2 root 3x minus 2 root 3y here and here. And then now I have 3 minus 1, which is equal to positive 2. And the whole thing is equal to 0. Notice that everything can be divided by 2. Let's go ahead and do that. Divide both sides by 2. This gives us x squared plus y squared plus xy minus root 3x minus root 3y plus 1 equals 0. Great. Now, I'd like to write this as a quadratic equation. So let's go ahead and do the following. Let's isolate x squared here. And then the terms that has x in them, I'm going to put those together. So I can just write it as y minus root 3 times x, these two terms, and then I've taken care of that. And then, actually not that one, this one and this one, these two, and then I'll separately write the y squared. And then after this, I'm going to have everything else uh, y squared and then minus square root of 3y plus 1 is equal to 0. So that's a quadratic equation in x, and we can solve it by using the quadratic formula. So let's go ahead and plug everything into the quadratic formula and solve for x. And then after we find the x values, hopefully we're going to be able to find the other values as well. And now why did I do this for x? It doesn't really matter because of the symmetry. Whatever I did for x, I, uh, I could be doing for other variables as well. So it doesn't really matter at the end. We have this type of symmetry. Okay. So let's go ahead and write down the quadratic formula for this. So x equals from here negative b, which is square root of 3 minus y plus minus the square root of b squared. So I'm going to square b, y minus root 3, x squared. So I can just square both of them. And then minus b squared. Actually, it's not the x squared. It's just a coefficient. b squared minus 4ac minus 4 times 1, which I don't have to worry about, times c, that's going to be y squared minus root 3y plus 1, okay? And then this is going to be divided by 2a, which is 2 in this case. Okay, now let's go ahead and simplify this. Uh, Whatever is inside the parentheses, actually, I can just go ahead and simplify that and replace it with what it is or just write the whole thing. Okay, that's, that's fine. I think that we're going to write the whole thing. So we're going to get the square root of, okay, if I expand this, I'm getting y squared minus 2 root 3y plus 3. And if I distribute the 4, negative 4y squared plus 4 root 3y minus 4. And then I'm going to be dividing the whole thing by 2. And let's go ahead and simplify inside the radical. So I have what do I have inside the radical? 
So let's go ahead and write it here. Okay. I have square root of 3 minus y plus minus. Now inside the radical, I have y squared minus 4y squared. That's negative 3y squared. I have 4 root 3y minus 2 root 3y. That's positive 2 root 3y. And then I should be getting from 3 minus 4. That should give me a negative 1. Okay? And the whole thing is divided by 2. Great. Now, what do I have inside the radical? Let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. And I can do that by, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write this separately so I can easily work it out and then replace it. So this can be take, okay, so I can take out a negative 1. If I do, I'll be getting 3y squared minus 2 root 3y plus 1. Now, if you look at the, what's inside the parentheses carefully, you're going to notice that it's a perfect square. It is actually square root of 3y minus 1 quantity squared. So that's what I have inside the radical. Let's go ahead and replace the radical with that one. Square root of 3 minus y plus minus the square root of negative root 3y minus 1 quantity squared. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Well, this expression is kind of like that looks like a negative expression. First of all, something squared, something squared uh, cannot be positive, right? I mean, cannot be negative, sorry. It's the other way around. So square root of 3y minus 1, in other words, uh, square root of 3y minus 1 quantity squared is non-negative. But when you multiply it by a negative number, it just becomes totally non-positive, which means it can't be positive. So what's that supposed to mean? Well, it means that uh, we are looking for real solutions, and in order to have real solutions, our discriminant needs to be greater than or equal to zero. But looks like it is less than or equal to zero, which means it has to be zero. That's the only option that's going to work for us. So discriminant needs to be zero, otherwise it's going to be negative, and I don't want that. So from here we get square root of 3y minus 1, quantity squared, all that stuff, but let's just go ahead and set it equal to zero like this because it's the same thing. And from here I'm getting uh, square root of 3y equals 1, and y equals 1 over square root of 3, which I can write as square root of 3 over 3. Okay? So I, I got the y value. How can I find the x value? Well, you can take advantage of symmetry, or you can just use the fact that the discriminant is equal to 0. So from here, so from here we get that x is equal to square root of 3 y minus y. And then it's going to be plus minus 0. I don't have to worry about it. Divided by 2. So now I got the y value. Let's go ahead and find the x value. Square root of 3 minus square root of 3 over 3 and all over 2. If you make a common denominator, you get 3 root 3 minus root 3. That's going to give you a 2 root 3 divided by 3 divided by 2, which is going to be 6. And this also gives you the same thing, which is not a surprise because we knew from symmetry that uh, we would get a similar result. So x value is also square root of 3 over 3. Now, if you go ahead and plug this into the original system, you're, you'll also notice that the z value, or if you use this uh, substitution here, you're going to be getting the same value. So the z value will also be the same, and we're going to be getting square root of 3 over 3 from here. So our solution set is made up of, as a, you know, and obviously x, y, z can be switched around, but it's an ordered pair, so I'm going to write it as square root of 3 over 3, square root of 3 over 3, and the square root of 3 over 3 as an ordered triple. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you think. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.